Brand Vision Summit 2019-2020 brings to the spotlight the vision of leaders, brands and organizations that determine their existence in the competitive market of today. The creme de la creme of India's most notable brands were awarded for their stellar efforts in today's competitive market. As a run-up to the awards, a series of interactive sessions were conducted to understand the changing trends in businesses. Aptly titled, Disruptive Power of Entrepreneurship in the New World Order, the panel highlighted the need and importance of dynamic entrepreneurship, which acts as a stimulant to a nation's growth story. Change is the only constant. It's an offset statement. And today on this panel, we're going to discuss what entrepreneurs can do to ensure that they keep up with the change. In fact, they stay a step ahead of that change. So let's start with my panel. I'll first start with the gentleman on my right. Uh, Deepak, you know, you're in the technology space and that is one space that well, everybody says is the most disruptive because technology has now kind of disrupted every industry. Your thoughts on how disruption is impacting your sector? I wouldn't say technology disrupted, but the way uh, the world has changed over the last 15 years. I think we are, uh, a lot of companies or entrepreneurs mm -hmm. built businesses that adapted to the new changes. Right. Rather than, you know, they don't, if you feel you're disrupting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, disrupting has a negative connotation according to me. Okay. But uh, okay. I think the way the world has evolved in the last 20 years and Indian entrepreneurs like, you know, like me or the Swiggies of the world, the Flipkarts mm -hmm. of the world, They've come and adapted to the changes that the world has seen. And, 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 sure. and that has uh, had a huge impact on how India, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. India has been growing over the last uh, five years. So, so the key to success for me is how entrepreneurs or businessmen in India have adapted to the change that has actually happened in the world. So focus on adaptation, don't focus on disruption. The important word is adapt, adapt, adaption. adaption. Yeah. Gangsha, I want to bring you in on this also. Um, <clears throat> at PM Relocations, we're talking about how the business has changed over the years. The perception of the business has changed over the years. So do you think that's also a lot about the consumer or the, your clients adapting their thoughts to your business? A business like ours, where uh, we move people all across the world and we shift homes across cities and the world, I think the need and uh, the the and the process was always there. Like there were always people moving, shifting, and things were happening. But the awareness was very limited mm -hmm. because I think people just thought that it's easy to, or maybe it's just simple to just pick up two boxes and move anywhere. Right. And I think uh, long back people were living more, mostly in joint families. Uh, the idea of moving to another part of the world was was sort of limited because mm. you know mm. we, we didn't have people going out there and trying new ideas and doing different things they were more more living in a joint family hence i think in the last 10 years 15 years the whole uh, ecosystem has seen a big change in the way people look at the world today mm. like it's it's no it's no longer being at one place and doing things at your own place it's about you know figuring out where you want to be what you want to do and where you want to go hence the right. need for our business has definitely multiplied and uh, and with that happening i think the consumers have become slightly more conscious and i would like to say that it's also the way our industry has sort of progressed where it is where it was important to make sure that people understand that relocations is a very very niche business mm -hmm. and a niche service right. it's not something that you can just book a truck somewhere and just get moved because that's what people thought right right yeah. it's the, it's the whole um, ecosystem that you're kind of setting up for them. It's not just literally moving a suitcase from A to B place, you know, that's the important exactly. thing. Exactly. Um, so sort of I want to bring you in on this so from a little different perspective. At Kamdenu also, while you've achieved success in <coughs> certain sectors, you have again gone ahead and diversified and moved into new sectors. 
can you tell me a little bit about that thought process and how it has worked for kamdhen if a entrepreneur develops a model in which they make it very easy for a consumer to do business mm. then it is then i call it disruptive right so more and more people are adopting new technologies and they try to disrupt the business people say like if you talk of dis- disruptive people mm. take it in a negative way mm-hmm. but i think it is a positive way mm-hmm. it's is the ease of doing business like right. we have seen amazon and oyo and different new startups paytm but instead they have no doubt they have taken small houses mm. but even then they have created numerous oppor- job opportunities right like if you see a lot of small hotel they were unorganized and they were not able to sell at a good price but mm. now by oyo they are able to achieve that all right similarly we started in kamdhenu also when we started our steel business at that time it all the market was unbranded and the quality norms were not there but when we entered the business we set up few norms for the quality get the right price for the consumer and we even we were successful in that right same way when we were in steel business we thought why not in some other products so we entered the paint business pvc ply board and all those things they help us in a great way super that's that's <clears throat> that's really important there uh dr hema i bring you in on uh one other part since we started with deepak on technology and sort of also spoken about it but you're from the medical space how is technology or how is digitization impacting changing disrupting the medical space health and digital technology needs to be married for sure what we are seeing the change is both from the healthcare providers and the health seekers or the consumer point of view and there is a good and bad on all segments as how it is in the digital healthcare system also because it's always dr google who is the first consultant of course it's a good thing because the patients are empowered to know more about their own health and they come with the key questions that uh, we can proactively offer the m- uh, more information and help given the time constraints but also for example the divakas hospital app it's one of the small hospitals which mm. has an app so it's with so much ease that the patients do take their appointments and they can pay through the app and they have the video consultations they have our online videos and the chat system so there's a lot of engagement of the patient that can happen which is a great thing from healthcare providers point of view there are two main things one is by the minute the information is dropping into the digital box mm-hmm. and we can update ourselves as rapidly as we should right. and there is an opportunity for that the second is the skill transfer we have an organization called asian research and training institute for skill transfer so when people ask me where is it i said it's here because it's virtual it's digital because the transfer of skills to every nook and corner not only in our country but beyond the geographic boundaries we can make history without any geographies now so right. that is the way that we are looking at okay that's a great perspective there nipun i want to come to you also on the technology bit so while at amstrad uh, consumer durables and when you talk about consumer durables you obviously are talking about the innovation to where technology does play a important part there but you know we were also speaking earlier and innovation doesn't is not just in the product it's not just in the hardware there is a lot more to innovation that helps a business differentiate itself that helps a business maybe uh, up its game bring out a usp so tell me a little bit about that what what's happening in the industry what's happening at amstrad at amstrad what we've said is that we will be providing next generation quality service and technology okay and you know you can't uh, succeed with lip service yeah true you know you can't just make slogans and expect the consumer to keep believing you you have to deliver and walk that talk mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so when i say that i am going to give you uh, differentiation in air conditioning right right i am providing you an air conditioner which will be an air conditioner an inbuilt air purifier which is the need of the day an inbuilt air puri- uh, uh, sterilizer which incidentally is approved by the Indian Medical Association and a mosquito repellent. 
So, you know, I, I, I can you know, use a lot more time in telling you more and more differentiation, but I think you've got the message I guess that so. differentiation goes beyond uh, even just, you know, product and after sales service. I can give you differentiation in marketing. So it's not, it doesn't have to be that big bang eureka moment idea. Businesses can make changes, small changes that are beneficial to their end consumer, to their end customer. Uh, Gopal, I want to bring you in on one point. While maybe not disrupt, but you are doing things with the railways while you're doing the structural rehabilitation process. So tell me a little bit about what's happening in that space because that is a space that we rarely talk about. We'll talk infrastructure, but we don't talk about rehabilitation much. There are organizations who are very strong in their uh, like uh, uh, maintenance and all. So when 2014, yes, 2013, when uh, the railway decided to, we have to reduce the time of, uh, from Mumbai to Delhi. Mm -hmm. Instead of 18 hours, we want to reach to 12 hours. Mm -hmm. So there were like, 40, 50 bridges where the train slowed down with the speed of 20 kmph from 100. How to restore back? So this technology we have used and now the railway has saved close to six hours. So this is actually like Indianized. We can say we have done a research and then we are implementing. I, I, I never thought in 2003 that I will be doing business in this field. So I think we should do more research right. and let us see the problem and let us do the research. Well, thank you so much, ladies, and thank you, gentlemen, for thank that you. insightful, thought-provoking panel. Thank you so much for watching. The discussions continued with a second panel that focused on pillars of growth, innovation, and partnerships. Inherently, innovation is risky. It's a financial risk because it's expensive, it's an execution risk. You also run the risk of lowering the morale of your most loyal employees. So that said, Chaitanya, what's the solution? I think innovation is not something you do with a set of processes. It's not something that you do as a policy. It's a way of life. And for a direct-to-consumer brand like ours, which is selling products directly from our factory to the consumer's home, uh, innovation is something that we have to live and breathe. Otherwise, we are not going to be able to survive. To be able to get to where we are in four years, I think innovation has been a key pillar. And that has been achieved primarily by inculcating this habit in every single employee. So right from day one when they join, all through the induction and every single decision that they take later on, we talk to them about how they can be innovative in everything that they do whether it's a customer query, whether it is a doubt, whether it is empowering them to giving them the right kind of knowledge, everything is based on innovation. So I'll bring you in here, Rajesh. Chaitanya says innovation is essentially survival. But isn't it difficult to sort of build in the right incentivization structures within a company such that mid-level employees are encouraged to innovate? Well, thank you, Pooja. Uh, you're right about it. it is. It's complicated, it's complex, but it's not difficult. Um, from an entrepreneurial point of view, right, if you're building a company, then you understand that if you're going to be making all decisions at the top level, uh, there is only so much you're going to do. It's when every employee of yours is contributing, okay, because your employee is in touch with the grassroots, he is in touch with your customer, he is in touch with the problems. So, you know, when innovation will come from there, it will actually come as a genuine solution to a problem. In our case, for example, at Pacific Gaming, we run Poker Saint, we run Gully Rami. Now, these are online games, and these are traditionally games that have been, um, you know, run in a very different way. And we brought about a lot of system and one of the greatest change we have made to India in the online gaming space is that we have brought in instant cash outs for our players. Sure. Okay, now when I speak about instant cash outs, I want to tell you what, is, what, what does it mean. Our closest competitors, who might probably be a market leader still, takes about three days to you know, deposit money into a uh, user's account when a user wants to take money out. We wanted to do it in 60 seconds, right? And then when we did this, 
the immediate reaction was that it's too risky. But we realized we were able to do it only in India, mind you, because India is one of the you know, countries that leads the way in fintech. We are the only ones who have IMPS, right? And we could use IMPS and innovate on a gaming company. Now, just imagine, this idea came out from uh, one of our team members, uh, and it's completely changed. Today, we are the second largest gaming company in India, right? In a span of two years, having been bootstrapped, it's thanks to such innovations, right? I can talk about partnerships probably, I'll wait for you to uh, bring that up, but uh, uh, that's how important incentivizing your uh, team is, so that you know how uh, you're gonna get something great out of the team and innovate based on that. Now, Apart, you're obviously the youngest member of this panel. So, you know, very curious to understand how someone at your level within a company such as Concept Medical essentially bridges the gap when it comes to mindset around innovation. Uh, so, I read this somewhere that, you know, when you are going to innovate, be ready to be misunderstood. So, I think the journey from innovation to market is all about first making your uh, internal team, your team to be understood, to believe in your idea, to believe in the innovation. And the second part is to start, you know, making the customers understand what you have innovated. But as I said, the primary part is to make your uh, team members who have, who have been part of the, uh, you know, innovating journey to believe in the project. And I think that's, that's uh, more than enough for the journey to start. And, you know, Mr. Raju, in your capacity at Reva University, obviously you are responsible for shaping the next generation of young minds, right? How do you encourage them to sort of build more appetite for risk and therefore gravitate towards innovative job opportunities and sort of opportunities professionally or personally, rather than simply taking the chartered course? Innovation is going on uh, from last uh, five years when we started a uh, university. Through this, always I am pushing students and bringing a lot of industry people into the Silver's panel and through them, what are all required for the society again. That is, what type of uh, innovations should happen in industry, in the society also, particularly for uh, agriculture. For agriculture, we have introduced uh, some of the uh, components into engineering. That is how the real innovation is happening in Reva University. These results will be out uh, in two, three years so that the, our students who are doing these multidisciplinary courses will come out from that time. Through innovations only, any country can develop. In this digital world, that is very, very important. Definitely, uh, this, uh, again, everybody's cooperation in this. And uh, every industry, uh, industrialists, financial people who are into health, all people have to support each other and cooperation is very much uh, required to uh, take the innovation into next level. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that makes for a wonderful note upon which to close. I have to thank all of our panelists for sharing such a rich range of perspectives from their personal and professional journeys. Thank you so much. We wish you all continued success. Thank you. Brand Vision Summit honoured the best brands in business for their exemplary working efforts. The event continued on a high note with speakers bringing their thoughts and insights on the changing trends in business practices. Kandanu Parivars ki or se ab sabhi logo ka bahut bahut swagat, sabhi logo ko bahut bahut badhai. Aaj din hai celebration ka hamare wo sab winners jinhone apne apne fields mein kuch different kiya. कहते हैं कि कुछ भी अच्छा करने के लिए हमें अपने अपने फील्ड्स में आगे बढ़ने के लिए एक लीडरशिप की जरूरत होती है और एक इनोवेशन की जरूरत होती है हम सब 
अगर हम चाहें एक विजन एक ड्रीम अगर हम एक देखें और हम उसे पूरा करना चाहें तो हमें निश्चित रूप से कुछ डिफरेंट करना होगा हमें अपनी पूरी टीम के साथ पूरे सिस्टम के साथ पूरे कंट्री की जो रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैं जो एक लीडरशिप को एक देखनी होगी वो सब समझते हुए हम लोगों को अपने अपने फील्ड्स में जो आज के युग में इनोवेशन हम लोगों को करने होते हैं वो हम लोगों को करने होंगे तभी हम लोग कुछ कर पाएंगे मैं कामधेनु परिवार की ओर से आए हुए हैं हमारे सभी विनर्स सभी को बधाई देता हूं और नेक्स्ट ब्रांड को बधाई देता हूं कि उन लोगों ने इतने सारे लोगों को सम्मानित किया उन सब लोगों के लिए जो यहाँ पर आए हैं हम चाहें तो हमारे जो प्रधानमंत्री जी हैं उनका एक सपना है कि हम अब हमारे भारतवर्ष को एक फाइव ट्रिलियन इकोनॉमी हम लोग बनाएं तो हमें सबको मिलकर इस सपने को पूरा करना है जय हिंद जय भारत थैंक यू फॉर मी एम्पावरमेंट एस अ वुमन आई डोंट थिंक आई वुड से बिकॉज आई बिलीव आई एम एन एंटरप्रनोर फर्स्ट एंड अ वुमन नेक्स्ट so whether it's education or whether it is what you do in your life it's not planned out the way you want to do it i'm an electrical and electronics engineer who moved into pharmaceuticals in 1992 and um, since then i have been kind of moving up and up in that particular corporate ladder called the pharmaceutical industry when i entered this industry it was not very easy for me because uh, the pharma industry in india was dominated by the men and also that was a period when uh, the only women found in this industry were women who were either the wives of the owners or the daughters or the daughters in law of the owners so i was a professional who had come into this industry and i was probably lucky because i had some very good mentors along the way people who really taught me about pharmaceuticals because when i started out in this industry trust me i did not know what pharmaceuticals were all about my only ability was my ability to market today we are very happy and i'm very proud to be a part of the growing india we are doing pretty well we are a european union approved facility and we are also a facility that's moving fast into oncological sector and into corticosteroids and variety of other drugs so anyway having said all that i'm very happy to be here thank you very much for having me in this place and jai hind jai maharashtra and jai bharat thank you very much on the next episode of brand vision summit 2019 2020